the agenda items four to six will be included throughout this. Please try and keep your questions until the end. Now I'll explain why in the moment we're going to include all of those other agenda items together. So to start with my report, this current civic year, 2021-22, has been busy and challenging as always. We continue to work under COVID-19 pandemic rules using Microsoft Teams to conduct our council business and to hold meetings until the law reverted back to requirement for face to face. We took the decision to hold our full council meeting at the Olive Bowl for the first few months of this change, just to ensure that we could provide space to in-note attending and could welcome a large number of residents to the meeting should they wish to attend in person. We also continue to stream the full council and all our committee meetings on MSTs in order to reach as many Gillingham residents as possible. And as you can see with the cameras tonight, we continue to do that now and we'll continue to do that in the future. I'd like to thank all of our councillors and council staff for their hard work and significant commitment to the well-being of the town during the challenges of the last year. That your dedication to the roles that you hold the town would not be in the excellent shape that it is today. I structured this evening's report under topic headings rather than as a running commentary throughout the year. We also have four organisations represented here tonight, and I'll ask each of them to contribute to this assembly by informing us of what they do for the community. The organisations are represented in the front row. They are the Dorset Association of Parish and Town Councils. The North Dorset Disability Information Service, Rendezvous Gillingham, and the charity of William and Reed, William Reed, which is my chair, Mayor's charity for this year. So to start, people. We've undergone a number of changes throughout the year. Two of our councillors stood down for personal reasons during the year. My sincere thanks go to councillors John Robinson and Dennis Griffin. For their service to the community in Gillingham. We have two new councillors who came on board by different routes at an extraordinary full council meeting in November. Councillor Laura Ashfield, who was elected to the town ward by a by election. Councillor Mark Walton, who was co opted to represent Ham Ward on the same night following applications and presentations from three candidates. Council welcomed our new councillors. We've already made contributions to our work. The elections take place when 10 or more residents request an election for a vacant council. If an election is not requested, then the council seeks applicants for co option. The elections are supervised by democratic services of Dorset Council and come at a cost to the town. To the, town. the last election has been invoiced at £5,527.69. Just to let you know the cost of an election. Sadly, one of our hardworking <laughs> and energetic councillors, Councillor Keith Whale, passed away on the 1st of March 2022. It be greatly missed by councillors and staff. We flew, flew the Gillingham flag at half past, and our committees held a minute silence before the start of meetings during the month as a mark of respect. I, your mayoress, councillors and staff, represented the town at his funeral on the 24th of March 2022. This leaves a council vacancy, which is currently. This year, we've welcomed a new apprentice gardener to our team, who is studying at the Keystone Norwood College and learning from our highly skilled team. We have recruited and welcomed a new groundsman team to fill a vacancy that we have carried for some time. We've also recruited a temporary administrative assistant to support the work of the council uh, that is doing reviewing its neighbourhood plan. We value our staff and the effort that they put in on behalf of the town. We commissioned an external job review to ensure that the council was meeting all of its employment obligations. We made a small restructure to the council staff from the start of this new financial year, and that's the first of it. And as a result, we continue to recruit for a part-time office role. 
Council has had great support from the PCA of the town. And during the year, we said goodbye and thank you to Police Community Support Officer Nikki Fear. Nikki arrived in Gillingham in the summer of 2007 with the intention of staying for about five years. 14 years later, she finally retired. Nikki was involved in the community in many ways, particularly with young people. We were giving talks to schools, youth and scout groups, advising and outreach youth workers, and, and much more. Gillingham Town Council thanks Nikki for providing a valuable service across the town since 2007, and wish, wishes her well. Now I'm going to move on to strategy. During the year, we delivered the new five-year action plan for the council. We've already identified that we need to look even further out whilst looking and developing future budgets. The strategy includes reference to the longer-term longer -term requirements outside of the five years and will provide a basis on which to build the future budgets. The plan has expanded to include strategic work reaching out in five-year segments to 20 years beyond. In this way, your council is signposting its thoughts for the future. We're about to start the first year review of the strategy, taking into account those actions that are already complete and bring forward thoughts and ideas from the next five years. <laughs> On the 28th of June 2021, the Town Council adopted a climate change and carbon management policy. The Town Council's objective is to support Dorset Council in its climate change action plan by committing to further reduce the town council's carbon. <laughs> the town council aims to reduce its environmental footprint by reducing the consumption of energy in the water across all council activities. We've already made some improvements, including the change from petrol to electric for many of the tools used by our grounds team. However, we recognise that future further improvements are needed. We plan to create our own solar energy from panels placed on the large roof spaces of the Council Workshop at Roman The initial investment is significant, and so we have taken a view that we save funds for this project over a number of years, rather than placing a strain on the annual precept. We will move to electric vehicles once we generate our own solar panel. We have earmarked funds to create a water capture system to reduce our overall water consumption. We've already made changes to our litter bins <coughs> and tan metal to allow for resumption. In January 2022, the budget was finalised for the financial year 22-23. Each and every financial line was challenged to ensure there's absolute justification for its inclusion. The costs have been kept as low as practical, consistent with providing the standards of support that the town has come to expect. Now I'm going to move on to the development of the yeah. Now, down on the front, I think, you'll be able to see the planning committee's chair, the planning committee chair's report. And you'll be able to see that we have dealt with 99 planning applications throughout the year. So moving to the Gillingham Southern Extension, which was originally, originally allocated in the North Dorset Local Plan Part 1 back in 2016. The allocation included land for about 1,800 dwellings, as well as the local centre, an extension to Brickfield's Business Park, Principal Street linking New Road with Shaftesbury Road, a large amount of formal public open space, and an even larger amount of informal public open space. Some 90 houses are being built on the land east of Lawton Lakes. Other developments totaling 1,595 houses have been provisionally approved subject to financial contribution. When I go back to that principal street, and you will know that uh, it's been linked um, to one of our other projects yeah. over the recent past, which is the road to the to an end. 
So during the year work started on the construction of that principal street, it was made possible by a grant of £6.3 million pounds from the Homes England Housing Infrastructure Fund. They paid for planning permission, the road design, and to build the 1.3 kilometre long road through the development. This residential road will have a shared footway cycleway on both sides of the street, street lighting, parking spaces, and green verges planted with trees to enhance its feel as a residential area. Billingham continues to be a developing town. New estates are being built or being built or have planning permission of Barnaby Bead and Cornwall Lane. Council as a consultee champions local views on development providing that they can be supported by current planning members. Council is not the final arbiter of planning decisions and works to get the best results and develop them with planning scale. Yellingham has been subject to significant upgrades to the road network. This has caused dis disruption during, during the year. There's been a lot of time mapping and resurfacing of the roads. I'd like to thank all residents for their forbearance during this time. I'm sure everybody will agree that resurfaced, resurfaced roads provide a better travel experience throughout the town. Excuse me. So let's move on to training. At my mayor making ceremony in May 2021, I challenged your council, councillors, to all participate in training this year with an objective of improving on our double star training award for the last two years, raising our training participation from 60% to over 90%. This year has been a new Council of Code of Conduct, a register of interest and complaints policy, and I'm pleased to report that your council has raised the training challenge, and therefore I'm confident that we will achieve our training challenge. Our staff have undertaken continuous professional development throughout the year. They have taken the opportunity to attend training courses provided by the Dorset Association of Harris and County Councils, the Society of Local Council Clerks, and ACAMS, the Advisory and Conciliation and Arbitration Service. Our ground staff have also undertaken practical training where possible. I do want to recognise our responsible financial officer who achieved her degree through part-time study in her own time and who is now studying for a master's degree. I also wish to acknowledge our assistant town clerk who completed her accounting qualification after two years of part-time part study and our works manager who completed his IOSH training. And IOSH is the chartered body for health and safety professionals. This is a great achievement for both him and him. I'd now like to introduce Neil Wedge, the Chief Executive of Dorset Association of Parish and Town Councils, to talk a little about how his organisation assists councils. Neil. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, and um, thank you very much for uh, inviting me um, to come along to your uh, town assembly. Uh, just very, very quickly, um, this is my first outing. Uh, since I take, uh, took up the role of uh, Chief Executive of DNEPC. So thank you very much for the invite um, and getting me out of Dorchester and out into the part of the county I've not actually experienced and seen before, but it was a great journey here tonight. Um, we as an organisation are not actually a massive organisation, we're a very small team, um, but we look to help support parish and town councils across the whole of Dorset. We cover also the BCP council area as well, where there are a smaller number uh, of parish councils, and we provide quite a range of training. The one thing that I would sort of say uh, and commend Gillingham Town Council on is their continuous development of not only their councillors, but also their staff. And I think the examples uh, given here tonight are just um, to show a clear commitment to the personal development, not only of the councillors, but also of your individual teams. And I highly commend you for doing just that, because I think it's evident, um, not only from tonight, but all the things that I see from a distance down in my little office in Dorchester, of all the great things that you're doing here in Gillingham. 
Your town is actually going to expand rapidly, you all know that, and these plans tonight uh, just demonstrate how significantly bigger your um, uh, community is going to get. The work you do in terms of engagement of your community, and tonight is another example of how uh, you, you, you embrace technology and uh, the new advances that we've had in this last two years. So um, I would just like to say thank you for all that you do to support as well, because um, not only uh, do you attend in great numbers our training and obviously other organisations training, but um, uh, whenever I need to support another clerk that's either new to role or another clerk that's probably experienced, Julie is one of the first go-to people that I would call where we need a little bit of help, a little bit of mentoring um, from somebody who has great practical experience on the ground for the role. So thank you for your support as well to our organisation. That's absolutely super. And just to confirm and to finish my little speech, I'm pleased to go say that you have attained your <laughs> triple award in terms of um, <laughs> attendance training over this last year. Um, it's always nice. I can always guarantee there's going to be a Gillingham councillor appear on my Zoom screen because uh, they're uh, always there and present uh, at the courses that we run. So um, if it's okay with you, I'd like to present to you uh, the certificate. Before I finish, I'd also like to recognise the two ladies sat here, Julie and Jill. Now, if we have some flowers from our organisation for oh, their help and support. So, oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, and just to finish, um, we're very committed to um, modernising our parish and town councils, and I have to say you're an absolute exemplar when it comes to uh, progressing. And you can see tonight the use of the screen and uh, all the technology that's around is absolutely fantastic. We hope very much this will be part and parcel of council life going forward. So but thank you very much, and thank you very much for the invite. Neil, thank you, thank you. and thank you very much for the award. So I'm now going to continue with council property. We took the opportunity to formally open the, new, the council's new workshop site at Roman Court. That was formerly the Roman Business Centre. And we did that on the 23rd of July, back in 2021. This was a key moment and a key date because it was the date on which the lease on our previous workshop units at the old market centre expired. So we timed it just to do that and do that proper and over. We've been on the journey to purchase the new site since February 2020 and to refurbish it since owning the site from late September 2020. Since then, through a combination of hard work by the town council's ground staff, supported by a specialist building, security alarm, CCTV and electrical contractors, the site has been transformed into one that is fit for purpose and one that Dillingham I'd like to give special thanks to the members of the Council's Task and Finish Group and to the Council's ground staff for the huge efforts that they had put in to help renovate the site, also, also preparing it. The Council provides numerous facilities around the town, many that can be hired by community groups. It's been a significant disappointment this year that vandalism has denied residents and visitors the use of the public toilet in the town centre. During the repair, the council provided temporary toilets alongside the permanent building. And all of this comes at a cost. This year, we took in 2,926 pounds of residents preset funding to counter vandalism. So let's look at open spaces. Town council is responsible for over 70 acres of public open space. In addition, our ground team maintains over six acres of grass roadside verges on behalf of Dorset Council. 
Town Council maintains its open spaces for high standard, and most of the larger open spaces in Gillingham have, agreed, uh, have achieved green flag accreditation. More, more about that in a minute. Town Council also has responsibility for 16 play areas in Gillingham, which are very popular. Young people's health and well being is important, but we've worked within the guidelines of the Dorset Play Strategy provide inclusive, educational and safe areas of play. Members of our grounds team are trained play equipment inspectors and our play areas are inspected on a regular basis. In 2021, work was completed on the refurbishment of the play area at Marlott Road. And this year, the play area when in place will have a safe surface impact. Grass has been laid in the play area when in place is phase one of the project. A safe grass matting will be installed over the grass areas to complete the safe surface. Once this work has been completed, the swings will be installed and the play area will be reopened. I'd just like to thank you for your understanding and cooperation during the closure. At an extraordinary meeting of the full council on the 7th of June 2021, Town Council agreed to adopt the proposed play areas of the new development adjacent to Barnaby Mead. And we've been working with Esther Holmes on play area designs. Town Council also agreed to adopt the proposed play areas of the new Robin Lakes Phase 1 development. We're working with Taylor Wimpy to ensure our usual high standards are achieved. The public open space at Frog Hollow and Shreem Meadows is owned by Gillingham Town Council was managed in partnership with the Gillingham Action for Nature Group, GAN. As footfall increased, the most part the most paths between Frog Hollow and Stream Meadows often became muddy during the wetter months. So the town council worked with GAN on plans to create a hard surface path linking the two locations. The path measuring 35 metres was constructed by members of GAN during last autumn. And thank you to Bob Messer and all of the gang volunteers for doing that. For the past five years, the Town Council and the Dorset Wildlife Trust have been working in partnership to record and enhance the town's biodiversity. Town Council's important public open spaces provide a valuable network of wildlife friendly habitats. Town Council is also responsible for over five kilometres of riverbanks, which enhance the ecological interest. DWT produced a biodiversity action plan for most of our public open spaces and carry out seasonal monitoring to see whether these have, whether there have been any changes in biodiversity resulting from improved, improved management strategies. Many of our open public open spaces will leave areas of grass long. Long grass has lots of benefits for wildlife, moist and sheltered at its base, producing flowers, pollen, and seeds. Beetles, caterpillars, and various moths and butterflies, and grasshoppers, they all benefit. And then so do the birds, the bats, the hedgehoggers, and hedgehogs and others. Paths have been cut wide enough to allow everyone to use our public open spaces safely. The flower beds around Gillingham are looking beautiful, I'm sure you will agree. Our gardeners have been busy planting bee friendly flowers, herbs, and shrubs, which provide nectar and pollen throughout the year. It's essential for bees and other pollinators to have flowering plants rich in pollen and nectar from February through to October. We owe our thanks to our horticulturalists and ground staff for their skilled work, keeping Gillingham looking so good. Keeping Gillingham clean and tidy is a priority. From the 1st of April 2022, in other words, about 11 days ago, the responsibility for cleaning the town centre areas was returned to Dorset Council. Town Council staff and our contractors continue to service our public open spaces and our play areas. We've been busy upgrading and improving some of our litter bins and are grateful for the support of our residents in helping to keep our town litter free. 
Our community litter pit will be held on Saturday, the 7th of May, 2022, and details are held here in the town hall. The Oakland Town Council is supporting the Queen's Green Canopy, a unique tree parting initiative created to mark Her Majesty's Platinum Jubilee in 2022. The initiative invites people from across the United Kingdom to plant a tree for the Jubilee. With focus on planting sustainably, the Queen's Green Canopy encourages the planting of trees to create a legacy in honour of the Queen's leadership of the nation which will benefit future generations. On Monday the 28th of February 22, Gillingham Town Council was joined by pupils from Gillingham School and the town's primary schools to plant a tree at Jubilee Fields in Gillingham. Deputy Mayor Cannock, Councillor Sharon Cunford thanked the schools for their contribution. Fortunately, I was unable to attend the particular. The following week, I and members of the council were joined by the chair of Dorset Council to plant a tree at Rolls Bridge. The town council has also planted trees at Shire's Gate. Each tree has been marked with an official Queen's Green Canopy commemorative plaque and has been added to the Queen's Green Canopy map, which is creating a digital record of all of the Green Canopy trees planting projects across the country. Across the country. Further trees will be planted by local groups and organisations during the tree planting season at the end of 2022. Excuse me, I'm going to Finally, we've planted three trees at the junction of Station Road and the Lenovo Way. These are in uh, three. These are in. Um, Three times. They will be displaying pink and red flowers in May, and in autumn they'll have red leaf and winter fruit. So thank you to everyone who has supported the town council with tree plants. So now I'm going to go on to natural challenges or nature's challenges. Gillingham received some challenging weather during the year. On the 20th of October 2021, the Environment Agency issued a flood alert for the upper stour and its tributaries. The volunteer community flood wardens began to monitor the situation, provide information to members of the public via social media platforms. Town Council's flood boxes were unlocked in preparation. Warning signs were erected. Flooding still took many people by surprise, with some properties flooding for the first time. The flood wardens monitored the situation throughout the night. And on the 21st of October, the town clerk and I met with the Environment Agency and a company called Ruas Commercial Corporations to fly a drone over Gillingham to see how Gillingham had been affected. On Sunday, the 31st of October, the Environment Agency again issued a flood alert for the Upper Stour, and the volunteer community flood wardens put their own plans into Environment Agency then issued a flood warning, warning for the River Long and areas in Nottingham, Stour and Forest. Flood warnings liaised with the emergency service and with Dorset Council, who brought in additional sandbags as our town stock. Planned. The following day, the town council's grounds team worked hard to clean up after the flood and to assess the damage to the town's public open spaces. So our thanks go to our volunteer community partners, Sharon Cunningford, Julie Hawkins, Bob Messer, Donna Toyne, Roger Weeks, and to Colin Westwood. We're always grateful for new volunteer community partners, and further information is available from the town. That wasn't the end. Storm Eunice and Storm Franklin hit Gillingham during February. There was much storm damage reported across the UK, and Gillingham escaped lightly compared to some towns. Sadly, the council lost five trees, including a mature and prominent western red cedar in the Garden of Remembrance at Cemetery Road. The western red cedar will be missed, however, we are replacing the tree as soon as the conditions are. So now, 
So now let's look at grants. Yeoman Town Council has a commitment to encourage, support, and promote voluntary and charitable organisations within Gillingham for the benefit of Gillingham's residents. To help meet these aims, the Council awards grants each year. Grants are awarded to projects which will be undertaken in the Gillingham Parish and will be wholly or principally for the direct benefit of residents of Gillingham. This year's applications were considered on the 20th of September 21 and at the meeting of the full council held on the 27th of September 2022. It was agreed that following their applications, these organisations should be awarded a grant for the financial year. Gillingham Carnival Committee, Gillingham Craft and Chat Group, Gillingham Duke of Edinburgh Open Awards Centre, Gillingham Enterprise CIC, Hit Bones, Read Easy Blackmore Vale North, and North Dorset Disability Education <laughs> Service. I'd now like to introduce Peter Yeoman and Eileen Hamilton of Nordis as a recipient of the Council Grant in its last <laughs> financial year. I'm going to come up now to talk a little bit about the, how the organisation assists in the Peter. Good morning, Steve Dawson. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Eileen Paddington. Not the island most of the time, actually. Anyway, I'm just going to give a uh, note of how it all started. It's almost 30 years ago, Nordis was launched by three disabled friends from uh, a cupboard in Blandford Hospital. The charity was set up to give advice and guidance to achieve a better quality of life for their clients. They obtained lottery funding to help disabled residents apply for the benefits to which they're entitled. That 30 plus pages of the form they required to complete was a barrier for most of them. The manager, a manager and a part time secretary were employed, and they helped to fill in the forms, which usually took about three hours. Volunteers were recruited to obtain information needed for clients and to spread the word to local groups. Events changed to where can I get so and so to can I get what I need? Can you get what I need? Nordis has responded to this and for the disabled, the elderly, and now to their carers. Waitress gave Nordis a wheelchair, which was hired out, and then we purchased aids for daily living to sell. Our town is very generous. They donate equipment not needed for us to sell or hire, <laughs> and we like to recycle wherever possible. Now we're all volunteers with no paid staff. We like to help people who are getting through bad times, and we find this very rewarding. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, that's fine. Um, what I'll do is just update you where we are now, because that's what's relevant. Um, yes, we still provide advice and signposting service to clients. Um, but the main operation now is the shop opposite Little's on Newbury. Um, which sells aids for disabled, elderly, their carers, whatever, right the way through from really minor things like cups or reaching aids, right the way through to self-propelled or pushed wheelchairs. We don't do motorised stuff, we haven't got the space and we haven't got the expertise, but there is a place in Love World that does have freedom and mobility and then we work there and they're, they're superb as well. Some of it is new, which obviously costs a bit more. A lot of it, as Eileen said, is donated back to us by residents of the town where it's surplus or no longer available or in use for people because they can't give a home and want to be passed away. All of this equipment is taken by us. We will not turn anything away ever. We refurbish it where we can. We will on sell it at lower cost where we can. We do sometimes get excesses of amounts donated back, but we also work with another charity called PhysioNet who are 
who have a base down in the West Country. They take items which are spare from us and from other organisations out to third world countries. So none of this is ever wasted. Sorry. The ethos of the charity is that we are not profit making. We do not look to make a profit at all. Obviously, we have costs in running the shop, um, which amount to about £23,000 a year, and we need to make enough money to cover that. Um, and we've done it on a whole most of the time. Um, we're very grateful for, I mean, what's the, most of our money comes from shop sales. We're very grateful for assistance from other organisations. We've had a grant from Care South, the Care Homes this year. And we're also very grateful to Dillion Town Council for the support they've given over. Well, all the time I've been involved, yeah. which is about five years, yeah. and before that as well, I'm sure. Never been refused, I'm allowed to say. No, really. Obviously, put a good application in. <laughs> um, <laughs> much of the use make uh, the equipment we sort we sell can be sourced through the industry, but we do know that a lot of our clients are not that confident in doing that and accessing through that means. The other thing is, and the most important probably, is that with a lot of this equipment, just looking at a picture on a screen doesn't tell you whether it's going to be suitable. You need to come in and look at it. Sometimes you need to take it away and try it at home for a week, whether it works or not. As long as it's not damaged, we will take it back and refund if someone's bought something, always. So it is an important resource for people within the area. And it, it's not just literally giving, because all the villages around, we get people coming from Shaftesbury and various other places. But there aren't many people, places like us, that do this sort of thing. As I said, we, we're a purely volunteer organisation. No one gets paid a penny for doing this at all. We do it because we enjoy it. It's a beautiful team to work with, and it's a benefit to people. We try to recruit oil. Before the pandemic, we were open five and a half days a week. During the pandemic, because a lot of our volunteers are, shall we say, on the mature side, um, and a lot of them act as carers for other people who had to shield during the period, that even though I hit confirmation that we were allowed to remain that we could be retreated in the same as a pharmacy. We literally couldn't because we did not have enough people to start the place. We did run a, a collections or delivery service during the period of the lockdown. Um, but even though we now open again properly, we still can only afford to open three and a half days a week <coughs> because the volunteer numbers are not sufficient. Um, to do so. So we would love more people to come and join us. There's not a massive commitment. Um, all we ask is that it's consistent so that if you say you will do a Wednesday afternoon, we know we can open Wednesday afternoon or whatever. Um, what we don't want to do is open one week and then we close the next week for one week so they can't do it. Knowledge is not necessary. You will always be rostered with someone who's got experience in the organisation. Okay. There's always two people in the shop, many. We will not start at the other one who don't do um, that. That is us, really. Um, we'd love to see anyone in there. Thank you. Peter, I mean, thank you very much. That's yeah. very important. <laughs> I'd like to introduce Helen de Silva Wood, Rendezvous, also a recipient of a cancer grant for this last financial year. She's going to talk a little bit about how her organisation assists the youth of Dillon. 
um, I'm going to talk very fast because I have got quite a lot to say, and um, because we're doing more in Gillingham than the project that the council has supported, and we're able to do more because the council has supported our project. And I hope um, you'll agree that we've been able to sort of really to grow it and and do some really positive, strong stuff. So Julie's going to um, average Gillingham. We have a team of two who go out into the streets and the parks um, on a weekly basis in the summer. Um, there's been some slight changes in staff. We too, like the council, believe in developing people. So Lou has moved on to work on our lottery funded project. Um, Becca is now leading. And we're delighted to have appointed Zoe. Part of our original ambition was always to build up a local team of people who live in Gillingham, because we basically were a rendezvous group. Um, and Zoe is Gillingham born and bred, and she's went through Gillingham School, she's volunteered at the youth club, and so we're beginning to get build those connections across all the different parts that um, was always part of our original aim. So, um, I mean, it's been very, very tough with COVID disruptions and illness and all the rest of it throughout the thing. But I mean, one of the real highlights was we have managed to make um, a small film. We built on the film that we made before, which was called COVID and Me, which some of you may or may not have seen. Um, but this one, Find Your Way, um, was made to celebrate the orienteering trail. I'm going to finish off with that one. Um, it was it was tough and it took much much longer than it should have done but you know we got there and we're really pleased um we're really pleased that the sort of young people really recognize the team and we're looking to sort of build on the fact that there are more people using the parks and things like this now there are there are groups where we believe that we can get them to actually take some ownership and we're looking at developing them to deliver their own five side football tournaments and make them use of facilities in the community. So that that continues, um, and we're engaging with young people that are at risk and sort of liaising with statutory agencies around that. Um, our young parents project's been going since two thousand and nineteen. It runs the same as the one in Sherborne, really successful. Grace with a funny smile on the right. He's the new leader. She started in January after four months looking to find the right class of serve to take Sarah. And with this year, we've promoted young parent volunteers who were part of the original group in 2019 um, and they've gone through the application process, um, they've done CVs, they've done DBS checks, absolutely all of this and it means that we can give them proper references rather than just character references as and when. And obviously Zoe in the middle you'll recognise because she's the one who's involved in our outreach so it's lovely to have um, a really strong team there. Um, so they meet weekly at the youth club, which is really great. They've worked with 23 young families over the last week. But if you look at that figure, 77 advice and information sessions. Um, and we've got a really strong relationship with the health visitor team here. 90% of our relation of our referrals come from the health visitors. So we know we're targeting those young parents onto 25 who are most in need. Um, but the sessions themselves are quite active. So Grace has managed to get hold of the um, some free compost and so all the beds that we use cover have been sort of regenerated and the, the children are planting seeds and growing sunflowers and things like that but you know we're obviously very very concerned about what's what's coming because these young parents are living in universal credit and it's going to be it's going to be hard really really hard for them so next um, I'm really disappointed not to be able to, to tell you more positive news about our ambitions for our learning programme. We offer um, English and Maths level two qualifications for those young people who failed at school. It's equivalent to a GCSE pass. We plan to start, but then COVID hit two years ago and it's kind of blown my mind <coughs> a lot of the reserves. I was planning on spending to kickstart this. Um, so at the moment we need to sort of get a bit more admin support and a little bit more funding, but we've got already got people requesting support for because there's nowhere else for them to go. Their learning needs aren't met in other alternative supervisions. So that's a bit slower. Um, and then of course the last thing is our lottery funded project, and that's very much come from our outreach project um, and building a relationship with young people on the streets, recognising what's missing in them and the fact that we can't leave them and encourage them into other things and other activities 
and it's a partnership project. And um, you know, on, on paper for the lottery, it's between us and the youth club, um, the rendezvous, the, the lead organisation. But really, it's about partnership with the young people in the town as well, because it really is about their voice. Um, and I want them to be doing it, managing it, deciding what to do. Um, but also, it's giving them itself. And when we did a community launch on the 21st of March, there was a really lovely buzz in the room. And lots of people, people in school, people in hip bones, um, social prescribing, all those connections just beginning to build. Um, and everybody was really excited because there is an element of budget that is there. It's not for me to decide how to spend it, it's for the people who do that. And that's what we really wanted. And I knew we could get this money and it, we can create a framework. And I really hope it will grow. I mean, I had an interesting follow-up meeting with Ian Day from the town teams, and I think we can, you know, we talked about what they're looking to do, and I think there are ways in which we can complement and, and support um, their goals and ambitions. Next one. Um, so, you know, we really want to join the join the dots. So it's it's about young people, but actually it involves the whole town. Um, and you know, there's the basic aims we're looking to improve young people's lives. Um, just a sort of a few facts, £350,000 over five years. It's quite a substantial amount to bring into one small Dorset town. So I'm you know, quite proud about that. Um, I'm always cautious when it comes to numbers, but I think three to 400 a year is realistic. I'd like to see more than that, but I don't want to sort of trip myself up. And it is about creating new opportunities. And post-COVID, you know, you talk about the vandalism and things like that, and we're seeing it in Sherborne and behaviour particularly very young people, sort of 12, 13 year olds, you know, sort of physical behaviour, that the problems with mental health. Um, this is really, it's a really, really exciting opportunity. I think we're almost at the last slide. Yeah, so this year, um, what it includes is we've got media makers, we've got a group they met on Saturday for the first time at the Slade Centre, using media, they're going to be the ones consulting, they're going to be taking it back to the steering group that will involve young people. They'll be um, making the decisions and the decisions that get made on that financial spend, they'll be the ones who are communicating it to the other young people to explain why they can't have everything and why they can have other things. Um, the young leaders delivered by the youth club um, will deliver an accredited um, qualification for the young leaders as well as providing opportunities for younger children who be led by our young leaders. Um, the activity program I mentioned, there'll be an annual event, and there's also creating part-time work for a young person. Um, and that's the first year framework. Obviously, it's going to grow. We want it to be it's five years, you know, we hope it goes six, seven, eight, nine. And as the town grows, hopefully we will create a big, we can involve more and more people um, and it will act as a glue to draw in all the different elements of work and I'm going to end just with a little film. Six That's what I'm looking at. I can see it there. I worked earlier on honest, honest, yeah. the sweat and tears. The young people of this little film, it's shorter than we'd hoped because, you know, as I say, everyone kept getting COVID, but they um, wrote it, they scripted it, they planned it, they did the camera work, so they learned lots of technical skills. But as much as anything, you know, there were young people with um, additional needs. They would really like to work together, act as a team. It's, you know, just very, very grand. You've got some amazing young people together. Really grand. Hang on a minute. It's just the sound we've got a problem with. Voice over that. So if anyone has a particular project, there's a website, the gycollective.com.
does say if it works. What you change for you? They did really well. The initial circumstances. Thank you for what you do not So now on to events of the year. The ever changing rules covering the COVID 19 pandemic reduce the civic representation opportunity. I've had the opportunity to visit events both large and small. Civic Day in the Dorset Town, the charity plant sales, switching on the lights on a charity Christmas tree, to leading the civic parade through the town to the Royal Memorial on Remembrance Day. Thank you to all of those who participated in these events and who worked behind the scenes. And made them perform the successes that you were. Just like to now cover a few of the events. So, accompanied by a mayoress, I opened the Gillshed at Orchard Park. Gillshed's aim is to help reduce loneliness and isolation for men, but more importantly, it's for men to have fun. This is a great asset for Gillingham, and a thanks must go to everyone who has made this possible. The Gillingham Transfer Show ran over two days in August 2021. Council took a stand to engage with everybody on land use in and around Gillingham. I was invited to judge the stands at the Wessex Square and in the countryside area. I spent many hours visiting the stands, talking to the stallholders, and finding out more about them and their products. The day was completed by me attending the show's president's afternoon reception. At the end of the summer, I attended two events involving our young people. The Gillingham Duke of Edinburgh Open Awards Centre held its annual awards ceremony celebrating young people gaining their bronze, silver, and gold award. Back meeting in person, Dorset Scouts held an open awards celebration evening in Blantford. It's a privilege to be invited to go along and to meet people who are constantly uh, challenging themselves. I've had the opportunity to attend a number of functions, amongst them with the Devon and Dorset Association annual dinner at the 
Olive Bowl in October, the Gillingham Chamber of Commerce and Industry dinner in early December, where the Chamber presented the Town Council with a cheque for fund purchase of the small Christmas trees that were placed on buildings in the town at Christmas. Many thanks to the Chamber for the generous donation. I opened my first Christmas fair, The Magic of Christmas, at Rivers Meet in late November. Our grounds team erected over 100 small trees funded by the Chamber, as well as the large Christmas tree funded by the Council on the town meadow. It also created Christmas displays at Newbury, Lodburn, and Station Road. Friday, the 3rd of December 2021, I was joined by Father Christmas as he switched on the Christmas tree lights. The event that stands out for me, though, if only because of its outstanding location, was the Rifles Awards Dinner for 2020 and 2021, held in the Guildhall, London. I was there representing the youth. The Rifles have the freedom of the town of Denver. Their award ceremony recognised five outstanding riflemen in each of 2020 and 2021. A further 15 writers were awarded the Family Chief's commendation in recognition of an outstanding act or meritorious service. Two of the commendations were for saving life. The Rifles Colonel in Chief is Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Corn, who inherited the role from His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, on the 22nd of July. Six other members of the royal family were also present, each in their personal role as a royal colonel of one of the rifle battalions. I was honoured to sit next to Field Marshal, His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent, throughout the event and to engage in interesting conversation. I attended the High Sheriff's reception in the refurbished Dorset County Museum, Dorchester, on Saturday, the 12th of February 2022. Guests there included the County Lord Lieutenant, Dorset Council representatives, mayors and mayoresses or consorts from across the county, the museum refurbishment development team and funding. Attendees were invited to tour the refurbished museum at the conclusion of the reception. Civic activities continue well into April. I recently attended the Civic Day at Atlanta Forum. I'm going to attend the civic service at Wimborne at the beginning of next month. In the meantime, on the 30th of April, the mayoress and I will attend the production of Made in Dagenham at Gillingham Street. It's a pleasure to receive the High Sheriff of Dorset, Mr. Michael Dooley, for his visit to Gillingham in March. And he's called Mr. He's actually a doctor, but because he's a consultant, they go from Mr. to Doctor to Mr. It's a very strange way of um, the promotion, but that's it. So he's he's a highly qualified consultant. Um, after welcoming him to the town hall, we visited businesses on the high street and then moved on to hip bones, where we met staff, volunteers, and government. After a short drive to Thorn Grove Garden Centre, we spent an interesting time in glass houses, being instructed on plant growing by a member who's supported by employee liability. The party then visited Rivers Meet, where we were provided with a brief on the development of Rivers Meet and given them a short guided tour of the facility. Many thanks, all who made High Sheriff's visit success. Let's now remember awards we have received and given during the year. So our public open spaces are carefully managed, and this has resulted in the Council achieving three prestigious Green Flags Awards this year, as Gillingham public open spaces are recognised as some of the best. The award is the International Quality Mark for Parks and Green Spaces. Parks and Green Spaces in Gillingham have played a vital role for people during the past 18 months. Throughout lockdown, Gillingham residents were able to visit the sites for exercise, as a place to relax, and to meet friends and family safely. The award of the Green Flag Awards is testament to the hard work and dedication of the Gillingham Town Council's grand team and the volunteers from GAN. Thank you all for your hard work and support. The title of Honorary Freeman 
is the highest award the Gillingham Town Council can bestow, and is awarded only on rare and exceptional occasions. In October 2021, the Town Council conferred the freedom of Gillingham on Clyde Drake at a ceremony at North Dorset Rugby Club. His nomination was made by a resident of Gillingham, which I sponsored in accordance with the town's policy. Clive settled in Gillingham at the end of his 30-year career in the army and has contributed actively and generously to many aspects of the community. As the managing director of a local care company, he provided an invaluable service to innumerable vulnerable people in the local area and provided employment for over 170 staff. Clive was an active member of the then Civic Society and Gillingham Action Team committed to the physical, social and economic development of the town. Organisations which have benefited from his stewardship of their finances, the Gillingham Youth Club, Friends of Gillingham Station, Dementia Friendly Gillingham, Coffee Companions, Walkers of Welcome and Gillingham Walking Festival, the Great Get Together, Gillingham Little Pickers and Gillingham Community Christmas <coughs> Lunch. All the world immensely grateful for the timely, patient, and generous manner in which he speaks. I was honoured to present Clive with this award at a ceremony on the 15th of October 2021. His citation is magnificent, showing his commitment to the town over many years across many organisations. So in the future, the town council has completed tree planting in support of the Queen's Green Canopy, and all but one has been dedicated. The last one will be dedicated by the new High Sheriff of Dorset, Sybil King, on the 22nd of April 2022, as one of her first activities after taking up her role on the 4th of April. Buckingham Palace has unveiled plans to mark the Platinum Jubilee of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. The anniversary of the Queen's record breaking 70 year reign is officially in February 2022. Celebrations across the UK are planned throughout the year. The four day bank holiday weekend will run from Thursday the 2nd of June to Sunday the 5th of June. The Town Council has produced a programme of events being undertaken by various community groups over the long weekend. The programme will be distributed to all houses. Gillingham Neighbourhood Plan for 2016 to 2031 was what we call made or adopted in July 2018. It contains a number of policies to influence development in the town. The town council has been reviewing the neighbourhood plan and sought opinions of local residents regarding the future development of the town. We're working on the final update of the plan, which when complete will be shared on the town's website. We'd now like to move on to the fourth guest presenting this evening, and invite Mr. Sandrick, the chair of the charity of William Reed, to tell us a little about this local and long standing charity. After which, then, I would like to present the charity with the proceeds of the Mayor's charity for this year, as this charity is my charity. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Well, yeah. Uh... Probably some of you uh, who have not heard of Reach Charity and much less William Reed. And uh, so I'll tell you, first of all, a little bit about him, and you can read it for yourself on the screen. He was a wealthy farmer and he had lands and farms in Langham and Budget. And during his lifetime, he was noted for his many acts of kindness to the, the people of Gillingham. On his death in 1798, in his will, he left £4,000 to be invested. The annual interest accruing from that to be administered by some trustees who were to distribute bread to the poor. At 1798, 4,000 pounds was a considerable amount of money. But I should imagine millions now. Uh, so that's what he gave. 
However, the four thousand pounds doesn't go a long way today at the present rate of interest we're getting. Um, but there we are. As well as uh, rent for the poor in 1798, he also stipulated that those over 60 who were thought to be in extreme need uh, to benefit uh, from his uh, charity. And if we go on to the next slide, we have found recently, in the last few months, the original uh, minute book of William Reed. Uh, on the left hand side, there's a copy of the first page, uh, which uh, the book includes his will. And uh, going on through the book, uh, we get the minutes written down on each page uh, as to what happened. And the second uh, picture on your right hand side, the handwritten notes of the minutes of the meeting in 1823. 1823, incidentally, was the year that John Constable came to Gillingham and stayed for a month. But she wasn't, of course, in receipt of any money from William Reed. Although, yeah, I think he could have done that. Um, and then he goes on to say that uh, those listed uh, there, they hadn't received any poor benefit from the workhouse, uh, from uh, the poor law, uh, in the last 12 months. So therefore, we're going to benefit from the charity of William Reed. Now, if you go on to the next slide. Now, today, this continues. However, uh, we don't give bread anymore. Instead, uh, we, have, we have converted it into grocery vouchers. And in the month leading up to Christmas, end of November, uh, December, uh, we distribute uh, these vouchers to uh, certain people uh, over 60 who uh, we, we found were in need, in other words, pensioners. Uh, each voucher is worth 20 pounds. And we have given out last time um, about 50, between 50 and 60 vouchers, <laughs> 20 pounds each. Uh, so that's one facet of what we do. At about the time, or just before William Reed died, there was another charity set up by uh, a Milton lady called Frances Durno. And she created this charity to help apprentice boys buy tools for their trade. These two charities have now merged. And we still continue to uh, contribute tools for the trades of uh, and further education for both boys and girls, of course. And uh, an example, uh, which uh, is true to uh, the Durden charity, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, a boy from the beginning of school got himself an apprenticeship as a um, cabinet maker and needed uh, some a contribution towards getting the specific tools for his specific uh, line of what he was doing. And we were able to help out in that respect. The trustees may uh, meet uh, at least twice a year uh, but we have an emergency committee on standby to deal with urgent matters as they arise. I'll give you some examples of one or two things that we've done in recent years. Uh, last year, during COVID, uh, we, do you remember we had a hot spell of weather, went on for a month, and uh, it was drawn to our attention that uh, there was a lady who was a single parent, had several young children, and had no fridge freezer, and therefore was having to buy food every day and was not able to store things and keep them open. Well, you know, milk goes off quite easily, doesn't it? 
and we were able to contribute to help buy a fridge freezer for that family. Several years ago, uh, we were able to provide a wheelchair ramp for someone who had uh, was wheelchair bound. And we contribute to the cost of various other things. We were able to carpet a flat for someone who was um, in dire need of, of, of that sort of thing. So those are the sorts of things we do, we still do, in the spirit of the originator of William Reed. It still goes on to this day, thankfully. Going back to the vouchers, the vouchers can be redeemed uh, in local shops and Waitrose, we're thankful for, for them, Crockers, Prime Cut Butchers, although they have now moved to Shaftesbury, Prime Cuts reassured me that they will still uh, cash the vouchers in their Shaftesbury shop. And uh, Reynolds, uh, the pet and shoe shop, and the other farm shop at the stuff. We have in the past approached other supermarkets, but found them uh, unwilling at the moment. It doesn't mean to say we can't try again. It's because they're uh, not centered in Gillingham uh, and they've got to go through the head offices wherever they may be. And uh, they find that they, they cannot participate in our scheme. But uh, we will try again. So that really concludes my, my talk. Thank you, Mr. Fair, for Thank you. allowing me to Thank you, sir. Thank you. Now, what I would like to do is uh, present you with a small check, <laughs> small in number, I'm afraid, large in size. Um, this is the proceeds of the Mayor's charity for, for this year. Um, because of uh, pandemic and that sort of thing, we've been able to not been able to raise that much money, but everything is welcome. So I would like to present this to you. And I'm sure Julie is Thank going to come with the photograph. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Oh, I didn't say that if, if you want further details, I've got some leaflets here you can take away with you. Sorry. You'll be glad that I'm now going to say to finish. <laughs> to finish. It's been a challenging and interesting year in which to represent Gillingham's your pair, and I thank all the residents and councillors for the opportunity to carry out this role on your behalf. As I hand over the role in just over a month's time, I will remain engaged in all that we do as councillors to the best of my ability. I want to thank you for your support over the past year. Now, I'm happy to take questions, though I'm more likely to call upon others to answer. Does anybody have a question? If not, then there's copy there. Please stay, talk to councillors, um, have a copy of the skip and uh, just have a chat to us. At that point, at um, eight, was 50, 8.47, we close. Thank you. Thank you very much.